Okay, here we are over on the bench again, and I've done a bit of machining. You've seen the machining. Now, one thing I didn't show in the machining was on the worm here, they have a, a small plastic thrust washer where it sits up against the, the housing here. And I thought that would probably... Um, uh, I don't know what it's made of, but over time I thought it might possibly deteriorate and break up and crack and bugger up. So I had a bit of Foss bronze. So this is a Foss bronze collar I've made. So that Foss bronze, that's good gear. It, it's made for bushes and things. And it's the exact same width to within really close. A poof, we'll call it a poof teeth, a metric poof teeth. <laughs> and... Um, so that's right to go now the key if you remember the key and i'll find it here the the key was a bit of dog chewed looking stuff and here yeah, look I, I didn't put those marks on that eh? they were just there and underneath it it had a bit of shim and it looks like you can just see it looks like a little bit of a name tag or something like that that's what we think it may be but we don't know so I went and got a bit of 5mm key steel and I've made my own new key. Um, it sits in there nicely. So we had to find the depth of the... You may hear a few cars going past, but we had to find the, um, the depth of what we needed. And the old key, um, we could measure... We could measure the depth of all this this assembly that they had there 209 there or 5.3 mil and we can also measure the groove here 2.8 millimeters and we need to know the depth of this here so look all we need to do there is take a measurement on the side here 31.1 then take another measurement in the center, not in the not a cock into the side, in the center of the keyway. So you now it's nice and square. That's 33.3. .3. So you take your 31 off that and away you go. So that's how we came to the um, to the depth of the key. And if I turn this back on. And we're sitting at 4.90 and that that's a little bit lower than the other one than the um, God, it's noisy as soon as I start filming and that's a little bit lower than the old key but look that's okay we we're happy with this well I'm happy with it and I'm the only bloke that's got to be happy really so that key can go in there no worries at all now this fit down through here if you remember we had to press that off now what was going on there was that this key all the butchery with the key the key was that high that all the uh, all the tension on the gear there was taken on the key so now we've taken the key off and we've got a key to fit and though you can't even see daylight between my new key and the and the gear um, but being a quick manufacture job, that's quite loose. So we're going to drop a bit of either 609 or medium strength. That's fine for this job. 609 Loctite. So we're going to drop that in there and lock that in place. Now the, the bearing, which is a X32007X, um, it didn't matter how much I cleaned that bloody bearing, I could not get that to run smooth without notching. And, and you can feel it now, and it just must be from the rubbish running through. And I cleaned it, and I blew it, and I oiled it, then I went and did the same again, then I went and did the same again, and I could not get the, um, I could not get it right. So I went and bought a Timken one. So, um, that's the bearing I replaced it with. I can't remember what it cost, um, but it wasn't an awful lot. So, um, uh, another thing that I noticed with the bearing was when you brought the bearing down over here, um, 
I might have to pull that key out once more. I've got it so you can work with it. Um, when this bearing came down over the top there, I know we had to press it off, but um, the other day I could just slide that over by hand. So, so what we'll probably do from here is we have to press this cup, bearing cup into the <coughs> pardon me, bearing cup into there over on the arbor press. So I've got the I've got the little eBay bearing presser tools here. And I had to skim the outside off a little bit, so they're cheap as chips, these things, so um, we'll just go and press that in. I probably won't film that, just pressing that in. That's about as basic as you can get. Um, then we'll bring the bearing on. Now, the housing's all clean now. We've got that sitting nice. And what we need to do, the, the first thing to actually go in there is this bloke here. And... It's held in with these Allen keys, but you could you can pop that in there and get the Allen key started. But how do you know it's ever lined up? So we'll deal with that pretty well straight away. Um, so what I may do is just hold it up in place and put the side screw in. And that's just to give us a little bit of control over it inside there. And then if we put our... Well, put our Allen head bolts on the end of our Allen head screw there. We can get a start with that bolt, no worries. Oh, if I bloody get it in the right place, Lance. I was looking at the camera, not looking at what I was doing. Seeing what was in the monitor. So these three screws there, we just pop those in. And we're just popping them in loosely. And that clamp stops this shaft from turning. So what we're going to need to do is get all this lined up. So, And the best way I could think of to do it was bring this shaft in from the back. So if we slide the shaft in from the back, as far as we can, then we can see it's just coming out through the centre there. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten the clamp so the clamp on here is around the screw. So we know they're both lined up, I can't turn that. <coughs> and now we'll nip these screws up. Turn away, you're not allowed to look at this bit. Okay. <coughs> so that's tightened up with my Allen key extension handle and I can't turn that, so if I loosen this screw off, there we go. So that sits in there, no worries. We can turn it. We nip that screw up, so I think with a quarter of a turn it'll go from locked to loose. So, look, that's fine. That's all we need to do with that, just for the moment. Now, 
I'll go and press this on. Now this bearing has to come down this way and you didn't know I was that strong, did you? So, and this is just Chinese fit. That's just how it is. So I'll sneak, I'll sneak away. I'll just pop that in the arbor press and pop that in or uh, I won't do that. I'll put it in with the press. I'll be back. Okay, so we've pressed that in. That's all looking just lovely, our new Timken bearing. So we'll pop a bit of lube on around the bearing here. That's just a bit of hydraulic oil. It's, I think it's I think this is hydraulic 32 at the moment because I run out of 68. And I have an old drummer 32, so I'm going to use that until it's all used up. And so I can turn that there, and that's beautiful. Get this fella here. I just could not get that from being notchy. So anyway, we've made a choice, so that's how we're going with it. All right, so we need to get this key in. Now it sits in, I've got a very snug fit, and it sits in one way better than the other. I should have marked it, I suppose, but... You know how it is. Okay, that looks okay. So I'll just check that it's going to fit nicely on there. Yep. Okay, now I've got my Loctite here. This bottle of Loctite broke ages ago, so <laughs> the tip broke in there is a bloody thing. Anyway, not to worry. So it makes a bit of a mess, this stuff, when I when you haven't got the proper tip working. Okay, so we've got some Loctite in there. Now, we're just going to slide this down over the top. Like that. Now, this was the lock ring with the with a little screw there that binds on the thread. So we're going to do that fella up. Just give that a little bit of a tap around. I haven't got a pin span of the right size. I wonder can I hold it better. And the only thing is that's holding that gear in place so there's no movement there. And that's fine. So we'll pop this little I think I just, no I didn't, ran the wrong way there, it's bloody hell. We'll do this little screw up and that'll... And that'll lock that from coming undone. So probably in my lifetime, I'll never have to pull this apart again. Um, this assembly will come out for a bath if I need to wash it. Um, because where this sits, if I can get this off. The plate sits on top there so a lot of rubbish shouldn't get in there but there is a little gap there where the rubbish could get so so I'm not planning on pulling it apart an awful lot anyway okay now I think from memory we had to fit this housing into here before we started putting any shafts in that in so this housing's been all cleaned up and oiled up and um, we've got a heap of rubbish out of the middle there. That's all nice and clean now. So I'll run a little bit of oil down the dovetails here and the, the rubbing surfaces. And the same on here. just to give it all a fighting chance. So I'm 
pretty sure this has to feed in this way. Oh, look at that. I imagine if you made that dovetail yourself and you were seeing if it was a good fit, that would be what you were looking at. <laughs> That's what you would be looking for. Okay, now you can see I've got these these that lock the lock the dovetail in place. So I'll probably lock the dovetail so it's about there so I've got access to everything. And I also you'll see a bit of video where I made the washers to suit these. So we'll try and slide these into the correct place. Then if we put a washer on there. Bit of oil on everything. Pop that in and then you push the bloody clean out again. So the idea of making a thicker washer was just to spread the load a bit and try and have that screw not sticking out because if that sticks out and you try and undo it and it's got a bit of swarth or something like that, that's when you can damage stuff. So so that's, look, that's pretty good. It's not a thread. This fella here will pop him in there. Same idea. Same thing. That's out, out, a smidgen. So it's either a puff tank or a smidgen on this bench. Okay, we'll try and find our little sifter and we'll just put a little bit of tension on that. We don't need to lock everything up solid. Well, it doesn't take much to um, lock it in. But that's fine. That's what we needed. So what we should be able to do now is slide this shaft in. Now, I'm not sure. Plus 81 or 817. Who knows? That may have been the quality assurance man's number. I didn't mark this from top and bottom, I didn't think it would probably matter. That gear can still go in, yep, I'm just trying to cover bases. A little bit of lube around there. Just slip and slide, helps it all. Yeah, Kelly dog's having a bark. Must be a kangaroo running across the paddock or something important like that. I'll try and get this out in line. Oh, there's someone going up the neighbour's driveway, so that's why she's um, getting excited. I think she owns the whole bloody area.
that's a pretty nice fit in there, really. I still have to turn it around just a little if I can. Just a bit more. That's just beautiful. If I kept that in the frame, you'd be able to see how bloody beautiful it was. So I'll just lock this at the back there just so that it doesn't fall out without me noticing. And Jude's home. So hang on, I'll cut the cameras while the car comes and goes. Okay, now I've got all the noise out of the way, I believe. Had a yarn to the missus, now she's come home, so I'm back out the shed. Back out in Bundy Bear's little bin. <laughs> Whatever we're going to call it. Okay. We'll pop our Ellen head bolts in here. Not quite a videoing of an evening. Should we go? Okay, so we'll just nip those fellas up. No Loctite or anything, we want to be able to get it apart. At a later date, probably for another clean and a sort out. Well, a clean anyway. We shouldn't need to sort it out after this episode. There we go. That's turning beautifully. Okay, we should probably pop him up the other way now. And adjust this, put this screw on here and do the adjustment here. So I'll just, just nip that up. Oh, this bottom one's turning. <laughs> I was wondering why this one was turning, but I've got the dovetail round too far. Try and keep up, Lance. Bloody hell. Okay, now we have this little screw here, this, this nut, and it's a split nut, so once we have it in the position we'd like it in, we can, we can nip him up, so we'll, I don't think that's back far enough. Now we've got to line this up again. There we go. Okay, that's sitting back further. And we have our thrust washer from the back. Starting. Feels like it's sitting back further. What's going on there?
We'll go and do him up. Oh no, that's coming back nicely. So for rubbish to get in, it's actually got to come in down through inside there, which it probably won't do, I'd imagine. Oh, so never say never. So there's no no end play there. So well, all I'm going to do here for an adjustment, I'm just going to take this up as tight as I can by hand. That's quite firm. I don't know whether I should back it off a bit or not, but I think having it firm like that, there's no problem turning that, but it's not free running. It's, I might just take it back a little. Yeah, that's tight, but that's still. That'll be lovely. Okay, I'll just nip this fella up again. And we had a little counter sunk screw for there. So I imagine it was this little fella here. Okay, so that'll stop that nut from coming undone without us knowing about it. That's that's a really nice um nice feel that. I'll give you a turn if you're here. Now this little Cranwell and this little king. This little fella. This is feeling okay. So I suppose you could time this depending on how you needed it, couldn't you? So what we'll try and do is just do a dummy run with the plate. Work out where the plate sits there. So the plate sits on like that. I think having it drop, having a way to the lever drop down, have it up to turn. I'll see what happens if I go one tooth. So up is free. Down at 90. Oh, it's a little past 90 when you get it right. I might come up again.
that gives you a turn. And about 90 you have the tapered pin in. So I think that's where I think it'll be a good idea to have it. Now the pinion here has a little groove there for a set screw to stop it coming out. And we can see that. Out there. I'm not going to lock tight any of this in. It's just um, no real point. So that's up snug, so that's too tight. Okay, we'll pop that out just a little bit, I think. That's a nice free movement. Do you want to turn? Hmm? I'll give you a turn. <laughs> okay, enough bullshit hands. Alright. We'll get the worm, we'll put a bit of oil everywhere. Now I'm not sure how the best way to do this will be. Um, looks like we've got to put the worm in first. And there was this this screw that the worm backed up onto and we can see that was the mark on the thread that lined up here so we'll get it back in around there until we can see that thread down through the hole here one more turn I think There we go. I can see, I can just see that down. You're not going to see that in a fit. But anyway, I can just see that down the hole there. So when we bring the worm up, now it, it, it goes against that pin. So we'll slide this back together. And we have a washer, an Allen head bolt in here, with a washer. Now I had another Allen key here a minute ago. There it is, stop looking. I've got it.
I'm looking at the movement there versus the movement here. much going on there I don't think I think I'll put this plate on and we'll put a pin in here lock that pin back in and we'll see what position or how much backlash we have and see if we can adjust it up now we'll have to pull this off again What are these little fellas? We'll have to pull it off again because we can't get access. Well, I suppose we could down the hole. But anyway, we'll see what the adjustments do. We'll get it as tight as we can. These are countersunk little screws when I find them all. And that locates this plate from moving around at all. Okay, so we'll just nip them up. They're not tight, tight. No more. Okay, that's a, there you go, we got none, lovely, I'll just nip this screw up again to hold that position, well there's a bit there, So let's see what doing this does. Looks like we're going to have to have some backlash, just the design. I'll try and lock this up a bit better. Now this screw here, the one in the back, I should be able to and he'll just put a little bit of load on the ball on the end of this worm gear. So that preloads that up a little bit, but there's still a little movement there. So I might back this off a little. Loosen this off a little. Let's see if I can find a happy spot. So we're not to the end of the travel. 
we're not to the end of the travel on the slide here but we're actually coming up hard against it and trying to rock it back and forth to feel the a nice neutral or nice backlash backlash position I think we I think we're as good as we're going to be and we've got this screw on the other side we've got it backed out a little bit so and what I'm trying to do is let the gear find the bottom without any resistance So that's going in and out a bit. You can see it's getting longer and shorter. So with that turned all the way out here, I'll turn him up as hard as I can up there, nip him up. So we've got him up tight as we can up to the gear and now we have this end movement there so we need to take this out so it's out this way as far as it can go we need to nip this screw up here till it touches and that's taken a lot of the backlash out and that's pushing against that little brass ring that I made to replace this plastic one. So that's why that could wear out. Look that's a lot better, it really is. Yep, happy with that. Okay. I'm happy with the backlash, so we'll pop this back off. Remember it had a heap of backlash in it when we got it. come back put the allen head screw in one of these things we've got to have it firm but not wreck the thread on the backlash bolt here that's looking pretty good I'll give it a bit of a clean here another clean here Pop that on, any position doesn't matter. Get my mitts out of the way for you. So now they're all firm, that will have centralised it, so now we can nip them up. And look, that's just about it. Um, whether we just put the handle on here to index, um, direct indexing with this little 
handle here would be one thing. That's a little bit firm, I think. I might um, back that away a little bit. This one. That's better. So no backlash, really. Yeah, that's good. So let's try and find a happy medium here. A bit of fiddling, I'll probably cut half of this out, but that's alright. If you've got it filmed, at least you can have the chance to cut it out. If you haven't got it filmed, you don't have a choice. I think it was just too tight before. Now you can see just as I turn this handle, I don't know if you can see the movement there. That's pretty good. And when we look at backlash, oh look, there is a little there still. But anyway, that's not too bad. Alright, what do we need to do now? There's a couple of indexing plates. I probably won't put them on. Like I say, I'll, I'll leave that out, I believe. Um, this little screw up in here. Oh, he was a little Allen head screw, this fella. I'll pop him on. And with the pin in, like it is, I'll probably try and give him a tune up to line up exactly with a number. because he's mixed up. Okay, now where's the exact mark? And he's just there. There we go. Got to be happy with that. Now this little handle here, we'll pop that on, just so it's there because we can probably just get that happening. It's just a matter of tidying that up so I don't um, lose it anyway. And there you go. I've put the, the fat washers on the tailstock. These are the little thin ones that they had supplied. So that's all done. We've got a couple of boxes and bearings and things to go. I'll go and put in the bin. A really good key there if anyone wants one. And... 
So that's it. That's the end of the little video on our BSO um, semi-universal indexing head. It's gone from a cheap Chinese tool, 360 bucks, and, and I think the bearing was about $20, 23 or something like that. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I can't remember. Um, so we have a good usable tool. It's a reliable tool. We've taken all the slop out, the backlash out, um, and I think for the money, for a hobby home workshop like I have here, It'll just be the duck's nuts. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that other stuff, and we'll catch you next project.